So I'm going to move on and talk about wigs for a little bit. Um, one of the challenges that arose in the preparation of Unveiled was how to display the accompanying veils and hats on the, uh, the bald fiberglass heads which had been chosen for this exhibition. We felt that it was vital um, that we should display the veils in context. And as a result, we, be we began to explore methods of making conservation-friendly wigs which would assist in the interpretation of the objects while not, being so, while not being so showy as to detract from the objects. And this is the method that we came up with. Um, we made the wigs out of milliner's crinoline, or crin, which is a nylon mesh traditionally used for making hats and trims. And it can be heat set into curls using a hot air gun, or it can be stitched to create hair-like waves. So the crin itself was stitched onto a skullcap base, um, which was reinforced with rigoline strips. This strong internal support was then able to hook, onto the, hook the wigs onto their brass clips, which were attached to the mannequins' heads. So as you can see from these two images, the wigs became a vital addition to the mannequins and the understanding of how these veils would have been worn originally. And aside from their use in helping interpret the veils and the headdresses, we soon discovered that the wigs could serve a secondary function as the crin can so easily be stitched into. With this in mind, we decided to stitch the majority of the veils directly onto the wigs. We were therefore able to reduce the handling of the veils by using the wigs as both the handling and packing mounts. And, <laughs> and this takes me on to talking about packing objects for tour. As I mentioned earlier, in 2010, the V&A sent 20 touring exhibitions to 43 venues worldwide. This undoubtedly shows that touring objects and exhibitions has become a real priority for the Victoria and Albert Museum. When sending our objects out on tour, we do our very best to ensure they will not sustain damage or deteriorate in stability. To do this, it is vital to reduce the amount of handling the objects are subjected to. And with costume handling comes mostly in the form of dressing and undressing the object onto its mannequin. For this reason, the V&A has developed a system of travelling costume on its mannequin, with the mounting acting as a support for the garment and reducing both movement and strain. To this, we add a, a system of soft packing, which is designed to prevent the object from rubbing against itself, to prevent dust and dirt from becoming ingrained in the fabric of the objects, and to assist in the handling and crating of the objects. So, each object within an exhibition will have custom-made packing to fit its specific dimensions. This shows the packing of a Worth dress from 1880, which you'll see in the exhibition. And you can see the stages that we go through in packing this, this object up. So first of all, a pad is inserted into the folds at the back of the skirt to prevent them from becoming crushed. A pad is then tied around the front of the skirt to protect the beaded decoration. This particular object has lots of kind of fringed, fringed beading and we were worried that um, under the uh, kind of low level vibrations that it would sustain um, while it was travelling by ship, that those little beads would just jingle to and fro until they worked themselves loose. So this pad's tied around the front of the skirt and that really holds the beaded decoration in place. A silk tunic is placed over the dress, fastening at the centre front and incorporating a cover for the collar which folds up, over, and into the neck. Padded silk sleeve covers are then placed over the arms, preventing the, ubing, preventing the underarms from rubbing against the body of the outfit. So over the top of the silk cover, to, perfect, to protect the object from any dust or moisture, we place an overall tent-like cover made from Tyvek which is a breathable and water-resistant bonded fabric made from synthetic fibres. And we make a base using thick melinex, um, which I believe is also called mylar, um, which is a flexible polyester film. And that's really the end of an object's kind of travel through the, the mounting department, the, the mounting department of, uh, of the V&A. And at this stage, the object will leave textile conservation and be ready to be loaded into its crate 
by the packing technicians. Generally, the mannequins are secured in place by a button fixed into the neck of the costume and plates which hold down the base. Um, and just a little statistic, um, the objects in unveiled fill 61 crates and these in turn fill three shipping containers. And this is my favourite bit of packing in the exhibition. Um, so this was the packing that we made for, for the dress worn by Margaret Wiggum when she married Charles Sweeney in 1933. As I mentioned earlier, the train is 3.7 metres long. It's also about three metres wide. Um, and it's attached to the bottom of the dress. Um, so there was no way we could detach it and fold it up separately, as with some of the other trains. And we came up with a system whereby the train was folded into thirds and wrapped in silk and Tyvek. Um, we also stitched handles, um, which you can see us using in the bottom image, um, which allowed us to, to drape the train over what we, what we at the V&A affectionately termed the toast rack. Um, <laughs> after that's what was mentioned in one of our very first meetings. Um, if you see the newsreel footage of this, of this object being worn by Margaret Wiggum, you'll see that she exits the church with two men carrying her train. And rather than pack it up beautifully, they just bundle it up a bit like that and uh, shove it into the car behind her, <laughs> while her nine pristinely dressed bridesmaids stand by looking pristine. <laughs> So I went along to our packing manager at the Victoria and Albert Museum and said, I think we can do a little bit better than this. Um, and this, this particular bit of packing has become the real kind of media star of, of this exhibition. Um, and it's a, it's a great thing to go back to the guys at the v and and say, well, we unpacked that with about a million uh, media cameras pointed at us and nothing went wrong at all.